Gay K. Chesterton has put it in his words, man is not merely an evolution, rather it is a revolution. The comment presented by Chesterton has captured the unease of several people as they felt about the explanation of Charles Darwin about the origin of humans right from the starting. Alfred Russell Wallace, who was the co-founder with Charles Darwin in the theory of evolution, also rejected the fully Darwinian explanation of the human beings. He preferred the intelligent form of design to be a better alternative. Charles Darwin proposed for the first time about the unguided evolution almost more than a century and a half ago. Since then, several doubts have been expressed by various other scientists, public intellectuals and philosophers. However, in the recent times, the general public has been reportedly told that the case put forth by Charles Darwin towards the origin of humans is beyond dispute. There is not even the passage of a month in the observation of the new fossil fragment along with the study of science as an incontestable future proof about the evidence of human evolution. However, the question that comes in the minds of several individuals out there is, is the evidence provided by the Darwinian theory of human origin really that persuasive? Here, the able scientists would tackle the question. All the three of them think that the theory presented by Charles Darwin in quite inadequate on account of the origin of human beings along with the human uniqueness. Before advancing to the theories put forth by them, it is important to analyse the facts about the Darwinian evolution of human beings. Evolution of the human beings is a flexible term that can have several meanings. The meaning of the same tends to change over time. This passage of time is based on the indirect historical process of the survival of the fittest that would lead from one-celled organisms to a human. The modern Darwinian theory is also referred to as the Darwinism. This theory has two major planks, a natural selection that would act upon an unplanned generic variation and the common descent of the same. The common descent is the theory that all the animals that are living have descended from one or more ancestors through a process defined by Darwin referred to as the descent with modification. As per this idea, not just the apes and humans share their ancestors, but also fungi, clam and various other organisms. The process of natural selection is the theory of the survival of the fittest. The modern theory of Darwinism combines the natural selections with the intent of the modern genetics. Randomly occurring recombinations and mutations in the genes would result in the production of the unplanned variations among several organisms in a population. Some of the variations will help in the survival of the organisms and would help them to reproduce in an effective manner. With the passage of time, the beneficial variations would come for dominating a large population of the organisms. With even more time, the beneficial variations would accumulate. This would then result in completely new biological organisms along with varied features. Darwin made himself clear that the process of natural selection is quite an unintelligent process that proves to be blind to the future perspective. This process is not able to select new features that would be based on particular future goals or some potential benefits. As a result of this, the theory of evolution in the sense of Darwin can be explained as the result of an unplanned and unguided process. In the view of Charles Darwin, several amazing biological features like the vertebrate eye, the blood clotting system or the wings of the butterflies are in no way of any purpose to the results of evolution. On the other hand, they are the unintended byproducts that happen by chance, like that of the random genetic recombination and mutations as well, the process of natural selection. The same theory holds true for the higher genre of animals like the human beings. This study is based on the scientific arguments about the theory of human evolution. Science and Human Origins In the recent times, the origin of the human beings has become a subject of the renewed controversy in the media. In 2011, the leading newspapers named as Christianity Today and National Public Radio had run some high-profile stories that featured the Christian scholars who claimed that not just humans evolved from their ape-like ancestors. 
They also asserted that science has refuted the conventional belief of the Christians about the first human couple as Adam and Eve. Apparently, these scholars are convinced about the fact that the Neo-Darwinian reference of the origin of the humans has been eliminated from the explanations of the same. Most of the argument for the common ancestry with the ape-like creature is based on the factors of similarity. There is a great similarity on anatomy as well as in the DNA sequence. However, several scientists believe that the mere similarities between the two complex organisms and structures cannot be considered to be the reliable indication of the common evolutionary path between them. There is a surprising disregard among several evolutionary biologists about a number of genetic changes that would take place in accomplishing the evolutionary transitions proposed by them and the amount of time required by the same. The obstacles, however, act as an important factor in the evolution of human beings. This also indicates the fact that the humans could not have evolved from the ape-like ancestors through any unguided process. Evidence of Common Ancestry The idea of the gradual evolution of the human beings from the ape-like creatures or ancestors goes all the way back to the theory presented by Charles Darwin. However, in his time, there was no existence of the transitional fossils. Since the time of Darwin, several paleoanthropologists have uncovered various fossil remains that appear to be in the intermediate form between the humans and the great apes. The fossils, along with the recent sequence comparisons of the DNA from the living species, have led to the formation of a proposed tree that depicts the common descent of the great apes and the human beings. The evidence of the presence of the tree is based on two data. Anatomical similarities, as well as differences among the fossil hominins, great apes and the human beings, and the comparative analysis of the DNA sequences from the living species. It would also greatly depend on an unproven assumption that any similarities that would be found are because of the descent from a common ancestor. The fossil evidence that is present for the evolution of the humans from the apes is quite sketchy. The presence of the ancient hominin fossils is quite rare to find. The fossils typically consist of the fragments of bone or the partial disarticulation of the skeletons that are obtained from the different locations from around the world, as well as from different geologic strata. These fall into two broad categories, the ape-like fossils and the homo-like fossils. The discontinuity between the fossil evidence is quite distinct. Even then, the hominin fossils have been interrupted to be quite historical and physical evidence of the common ancestry of the humans with apes. The earliest fossils of the Homo, Homo rudolfensis and Homo erectus are all separated from the Australopithecus. This division is made on the basis of a large and unbridged gap. The resulting historical narrative is quite evident to all. The evidence from the DNA comparisons is enigmatic in a similar manner. The DNA sequences are referred to as a string of the nucleotides in lengths of millions and billions. The DNA sequences that are aligned to each to other for comparing them can be a tricky task. There might occur single base changes, deletions or insertions, several duplications and even rearrangements of the DNA that would complicate things and might not be further included in the comparisons. The degree of similarity is calculated on the basis of the process of analysis and about the things that are included or excluded. For most of the biologists, the similarity is assumed for confirming that the humans and the great apes are linked to each other by means of common ancestry. This assumption is underlined for all the evolutionary reasoning. However, it is to be noted that the similarity of sequence or structure cannot yet confirm the common descent on itself. For any theory related to the common ancestry to be verified, including the proposed theory of the common ancestry, two factors must be confirmed. Firstly, a stepwise adaptive path should be in existence from the ancestral form to the new form. There should be consideration of all aspects whether it is a new gene, a new species or a new protein. The second consideration is that if the same has to be happened by some unguided and neo-Darwinian theorem, then there should be enough probabilistic resources, 
as well as time for the neo-Darwinian processes for traversing the path. The neo-Darwinian theorems of the mutation process, along with the recombination, natural selection and the genetic drift, all of these must be substantial for the production of the proposed innovation in the given available time. These two factors, like the stepwise and the adaptive path, along with enough probabilistic resources and time, are absolutely necessary for the neo-Darwinian evolution to have taken place. An experimental test The question that arises is, how realistic is it for the humans to have evolved by the theory of the neo-Darwinian memes? The proteins that appear to be similar in composition and nature are assumed to have a common evolutionary origin. If the proteins have different functions, then it is assumed that some sort of the neo-Darwinian processes led to the divergence and duplication of the proteins. However, for the humans and chimps, the proteins can be easily manipulated and even tested in the lab for the successful process of the functional change. The individuals can actually establish the number of mutations that might be required for switching the older proteins to some new functions and thus determining that different kinds of innovations that might be possible as per the rules of neo-Darwinism. If in case the neo-Darwinian theory fails here, then it is supposed to fail everywhere. Getting to the human beings the research that has been presented about the similarity of the structure is not enough for establishing the fact that there is an adaptive path between the two proteins with distinct functions. In fact, the neo-Darwinian processes are not enough for producing the genuine innovations as there are too many specific mutations that might be required for the same. Let us consider the fact that what actually distinguishes the human beings from the apes. There are several distinct anatomical differences between the two. The upright walking of the human beings, the longer legs, shorter arms, the changes in the muscle strength, the significantly larger brains and the bigger skull, as well as the refined musculature in tongue, lips and hands. Significantly, there is a whole realm of the experience and intellect that makes us as unique humans. When asked about the number of mutations that might be required for producing the different kinds of innovations in the human beings, there is very little data for tracking the intellectual transformations. Six million years is the entire time allotted for the transition of the human beings from the last common ancestors with chimps as per the standard evolutionary timescale. Just one or two mutations are not sufficient enough for producing the desired changes in the given available time. Darwin's little engine about evolution a biologist named Richard Dawkins has once described biology as the study of the complicated things that would give the appearance that could be entirely deceptive. As per the theory, appearance could be entirely deceptive. The basic question of how we humans came into existence, breathing, living and doing things to our capacity is deeply connected to the assumptions made by the humans themselves. Everyone perceives this question at one point or the other. However, when it comes to the evaluation of the science that gets drawn on to making relevant arguments on this significant topic, several individuals would find themselves in quite a difficult position for having to judge a proper debate without speaking the language of the debaters. However, science too has progressed by several conflicting ideas. Several scientists have challenged Darwin's engine for inventing something much simpler than humanity. They have observed an important connection between the examination and the origin of the human beings. In simple terms, the scientists did question whether Darwin's engine was capable of altering a single gene in the bacterial cells so that the instructions provided by the same are able to specify a modified version of the original protein that can perform a new task. Since there is no prediction about how hard it could be for the production of a protein function that has never been seen before, did a thorough study of the known proteins and then choosing a pair that might be very similar in structure but different in functions. In terms of more familiar objects, the individuals can consider this test to be a real change of function. The question is, what does this have to do with the origin of the human beings? The answer placed by the same is an important function on what can be inferred from the same. 
There is a specific knowledge that the humans cannot infer Darwin's engine in producing thing B from thing A. This is simply because both the things A and B are quite similar in nature and characteristics. Darwinian Transitions from A to B If the principles might seem presumptuous on the first introduction, then the modesty of the study can also qualify as an exception. This does not imply that all of the Darwinian transitions are implausible. It just implies that the plausibility cannot be counted on the grounds that they tend to end with something that similar to what they had started with. The principle seems to have several implications for the theory of Darwinism. The general mechanism for the invention itself is no longer able to credit the attention. All that remains today for the evolutionary biologists is the business of interfering with the details of the great evolutionary family tree. The logic of the interference is quite simple. The greater the degree of similarity between the two species, the closer their evolutionary relationship becomes. The main focus is on the basis whether the similarities have been detected or grouped in a way that would also convince the other biologists as well as their thinking being that if the important things are properly documented, then the evolutionary relationship that is being interfered is presumably correct. This turns out to be a precarious reasoning. Considering the fact that Darwin's engine operates through the ordinary process of procreation, then all the species can be considered to be in relation with the ordinary procreative sense. However, if we have to reason about the fact that it wasn't the great inventor, then the sense in which one species is related to the next will remain open until the matter of the fundamental nature of the inventive process is settled. The findings that a particular evolutionary transition between two similar things is beyond the reach of Darwin's engine, that tends to undermine the logic of similarity under the Darwinian tree project. The Darwinian theory of evolution is mostly considered to be as a vast rugged landscape in terms of journeys. Each point on this rugged terrain is used for representing a possible genome sequence. The possibilities of which are so numerous that the real organisms have actualized only from a minute fraction of them. The ground elevation at each point is used to correspond to the fitness of the individuals that are carrying the particle genome, with the horizontal distance between any two points indicating the degree to which the corresponding genomes would differ. Now, wherever a species happened to be, the Darwinian's engine would make it move forward towards the highest ground that it can possibly reach. As per the Darwinian story, the simple tendency for migrating upwards since of billions of years has been transported for the first primitive genome from the starting point to the higher points along millions of diverging paths. The result of this story is the spectacular variety of different forms of life that are observed today along with the corresponding wide dispersal of the genomes across the vast conceptual landscape. Considering the fact that for Darwin's engine in inventing the humans from the apes, it would have been the need to work within various severe limitations of a single mutation scan radius. This implies the fact that it would have to invent the humans in one simple mutation at a time, with each of the mutations making the possessors much more fit than their peers. In contrast to this single mutation reach that attempts to distinguish the apes and the human genomes, the genomic landscape would lead to an upward cruise. The view from the sapiens summit When it comes to the origins of the human beings, it is quite relevant from Darwin's engine that it has become even more profound as the inventions attributed to it in becoming so. The question is that if the humanity thing is on a level of its own, then how reasonable it can chalk up to Darwin's engine. There is one thing to say that the humans and chimps are similar in character enough that their likeness calls for a careful inspection of the same. The truth is that the humans have the general tendency for accepting what they have been told over and over again and the scientists are no exception to this fact. The stories have their place in science, in the framing of ideas, but they aren't what makes science so persuasive. 
Therefore, the scientists, who continue to insist that Darwin got the human story, would do good to ponder the evidence that would be needed for the claim to seem persuasive. If so, the experiments were done by the scientists for measuring the fitness effect of each single mutation along the line of the chimps that would eventually produce the evidence. Human Origins and the Records of Fossils The fossils of the hominins usually fall into two broad categories, human-like species along with ape-like species. These are present with a great and unbridged gap that exists between them. Even after the hype that is promoted by several evolutionary paleoanthropologists, several fossils of the fragmented hominins do not help in the documentation about the evolution of the human beings from the ape-like ancestors. The evolutionary scientists usually tell the public that the fossil evidence for the Darwinian evolution of the humans from the ape-like creatures is incontrovertible. For instance, an anthropology scientist named Ronald Wetherington have testified before the Texas State Board of Education in 2009 that the human evolution has been considered to be a complete sequence of the fossil succession of any mammal in the world. As per Wetherington, the field of the origin of the human beings provides a nice clean example of what Darwin thought to be a gradualistic evolutionary change. After going through the technical literature, there is a story revealed that is highly different from the one presented by Wetherington and even other evolutionists who were engaged in the public debates over the origin of the human beings. The record reveals the fact that a dramatic discontinuity is expressed between the human-like and ape-like fossils. The human-like fossils appear quite abruptly in the record, without any clear evolutionary precursors that make the case for the human evolution that based on the fossils that are highly speculative. The Challenge of the Paleoanthropologists The humans, apes and all of the organisms that lead back to the supposed recent common ancestor have been classified by the evolutionary scientists as the hominins. The discipline of the paleoanthropology has been devoted to the study of the fossil fuels that are the remnants of the hominins. The paleoanthropologists face a number of daunting challenges in their quest for reconstructing a story of the hominin evolution. Firstly, the fossils of the hominins tend to be very rare. It is not quite uncommon for the longer periods of time for existing in which there are few fossils that might be used for documenting the evolution that was supposed to be taking place. The paleoanthropologists named Donald Johansson and Blake Edgar had observed that about half of the time span in the last three million years has remained as undocumented by any form of human fossils. Therefore, the disconnected and the fragmentary is the data provided in the judgment of the leading Harvard zoologist named Richard Lewontin that no fossil of the hominin species can be established as the direct ancestor. The second challenge that is faced by the paleoanthropologists is about the fossil specimens themselves. The typical hominin fossils usually consist of the mere bone fragments. This makes it difficult to come to a definitive conclusion about the morphology, relationships and behaviour of several specimens. As the late paleontologist Stephen J. Gould has noted that most of the hominin fossils, even though they serve as the basis for endless speculation and storytelling, are the scraps of skulls and fragments of jaws. The third challenge is the accurate reconstruction of the intelligence, behavior, as well as the internal morphology of the extinct organisms. With the help of an example from the living primates, a leading primatologist named Franz de Waal had observed that the skeleton of the common chimpanzee is almost identical to the corresponding species, the bonobo. However, they have great differences in their behavior. Wahl claims that no one would have dared to propose the dramatic differences in the behaviour that are recognised today between the chimpanzee and the bonobo. He continues to argue that this should serve as a potential warning for the other paleontologists who are under the reconstruction of the social life from the fossilised remnants of the long-extinct species. The flesh reconstructions of the extinct hominins are likewise mostly highly subjective. They might attempt to get diminished in terms of the intellectual abilities of the human beings and then overstate the abilities of the other animals. 
Given these daunting challenges that are faced by the worldwide paleoanthropologists, one might expect some caution, restraint and humility from the leading evolutionary scientists during the discussion of the hypotheses about the origin of the human beings. The fragmented nature of the data, when combined with the desire of the paleoanthropologists for making confident assertions about the evolution of the human beings, leads to the sharp disagreements within the same field. The disputes that are involved in the paleoanthropology field are often highly personal. As the leading paleoanthropologists Blake Edgar and Donald Johansson admit the fact about the lifelong quests for recognition, fame and funding can make it quite difficult for the paleoanthropologists for admitting they are wrong. The appearance of the discordant evidence is sometimes met with a sturdy reiteration of the original views. It takes time for the paleoanthropologists for giving up their pet theories and assimilating new information. In the meantime, the scientific credibility, along with funding for more fieldwork, maintains the balance of the same. There is no denying the fact that paleoanthropology is the field that is rife with dissent and several universally accepted theories that are common among the practitioners. Even the most established and asserted theories about the origin of humans might be based upon the incomplete and limitless evidence. The Standard Story of Human Evolutionary Origins Despite several arguments and controversies, there is a standard story about the evolution of the humans. Starting with early hominins and then moving upwards through the Australopithecines and then subsequently into the members of the genus Homo, there are several evidence and assessments of the story about the origin of the human beings. Early Hominin Fossils The earliest fossils of the hominin are so in fragments that they still are the considerable subject of controversy in the community of science. Tomai's Skull Despite the fact that this species is observed from some jaw fragments and just one skull, it is referred to as the oldest hominin known so far that connects directly to the line of a human. However, this theory is not accepted by everyone. When this fossil was reported first, a famous researcher named Brigitte Senut at the Natural History Museum located in Paris claimed that the fossil was intended to be the skull of a gorilla. However, some other scientists claimed that the skull was that of an ape. This debate continued. However, the famous paleoanthropologists have predicted that the teeth, as well as the skull fragments only, could be insufficient for the proper classification and the understanding of the species to a hominin. The results have shown that the type of characters that have been made use of in the hominin phylogenetics was not completely reliable of the reconstruction of the phylogenetic connections of the greater primate genera and species that would include the hominins. Ororin The term ororin refers to the original man. This was considered to be a chimpanzee-sized primate that was the only known form of the assortment of the bone fragments. This included the pieces of the arm, lower jaw, thigh and several other bone fragments. When this was discovered, there was a story that claimed that it could be the earliest ancestor known to the human. Some of the paleoanthropologists claim that the femur of the ororin has indicated that the bipedal means of movement that is considered to be appropriate for the population that is present at the starting of the lineage of the humans. The evolutionary paleoanthropologists tend to believe that bipedality can be a test of litmus of the membership through the line of humans. Therefore, if Ororin was indeed an upright ape-like walking creature from the time of six million years ago, then could that be qualified as an ancestor to the origin of the humans? Not entirely. In fact, the records of fossil contain the bipedal apes that are recognized by the evolutionists as being removed from the line of the humans. Just like the Tomai skull threatened the displacement of the Australopithecines from the ancestral line of the humans, several scientists have claimed that if the theory about the Ororin is valid, then the Australopithecines are no longer of ancestral connection to the humans. They were merely a branch of the evolution of hominid that became extinct. 
However, this hypothesis has not been accepted by the community of the paleoanthropologists as they needed the Australopithecines for serving a precursor of evolution that led to the genus Homo. While the Ororin provides evolutionary paleoanthropologists a great possibility of the bipedal organism that thrived around the period of the assumed split between the chimpanzees and the human beings. RD In 2009, a journal named Science had claimed the publication of the reports with respect to a 4.4 million years ago fossil named Ardi. The expectations with this discovery were that the fossil was considered to be a phenomenal individual. When the documents were released, finally, the media considered it as a great opportunity for evangelizing the public towards Charles Darwin with the help of the fossil that they dubbed as Ardi. A headline was run with Ardi, the oldest human ancestor. This fossil was termed as new. However, this fossil was first discovered in the 1990s. The later reports claim that some portions of the fossils of the Ardi were fragmented almost to smithereens as well as required major digital reconstruction. The bones almost crumpled when they were touched. Greater portions of the skeleton were trampled as well as skated into several fragments. The skull was demolished to four centimeters along the height. It has been believed that after the death of Ardi, hair remains had apparently been trampled into mud through several passing herbivores. Several years later, the erosion brought about the poorly crushed as well as distorted bones to the upper surface. The bones were so delicate that they turned into dust upon a single touch. Claims about the bipedal locomotion among the hominids required accurate and careful measurements of the exact shape of the various bones. Whatever Ardi might have been, everyone agrees that this fossil was initially badly crushed and needed extensive digital reconstruction. The discoverers of Ardi adamantly maintained the specimen that it was a bipedal human ancestor or something quite close to the same. Later hominins, the Australopithecines. During April 2006, there was a story that was run by the National Geographic that reported the finding of the most intensive chain of the evolution of the humans so far. These fossils, which belonged to a species known as Australopithecines anamensis, were said to connect Ardipithecus to the Australopithecines descendants. As per a technical paper, the strong claims were made on some fragmented teeth specimens that were considered to be intermediate in shape and size. If several million of years ago teeth of intermediate shape and size would make the most intensive chain of the evolution of the humans so far, then the exact evidence for the evolution of the human beings can be considered to be quite modest. Evolutionists who prepare the retroactive confessions about the ignorance are risking the danger of the evidence which was supposed to fill the gap. Given the enigmatic and fragmentary nature of the earliest species, a greater objective analysis can be suspected about the early evolution of the hominin. Australopithecines resemble apes. While Tumai, Ororin and Ardi have been quite controversial because of the fragmented feature of the available remains, there have been several sufficient available specimens related to the Australopithecines for gaining a better knowledge of their morphology. However, the controversy still remains over the fact that if the Australopithecines had been upright walking ancestors of the Homo genus. Australopithecines are the term that implies the meaning of Southern Ape. These are a majority of hominins that have been extinct from the time of the around 4 million years ago. The splitters and the lumpers have generated a plethora of taxonomic principles for the existing Australopithecines. Yet the top four known species are Boisei, Robustus, Afarensis and Africanus. The Robustus along with Boisei are the largely bonded species and more robust than the other species. These are also grouped under the species of Paranthropus. As per a traditional evolutionary thinking, these specimens represent a large living species that became extinct without any living offsprings until today. Then the smaller forms, like the Afarensis and the Africanus, had lived before and had been classified under the genus Australopithecines. 
these species are usually claimed to be the direct ancestors of the human beings. Until now, the most famous Australopithecine fossil has been Lucy, as she is one of the highly intensive fossils that is known among the hominins that were pre-Homo. Lucy is usually said to be a bipedal ape resembling creature that served as a perfect precursor to the humans. In 2009, the skeleton of Lucy was brought to the Pacific Science Center. Quite little useful things from the skull were covered. Yet Lucy is considered to be one of the highly significant species that has been ever found. Donald Johansson, who was the discoverer of Lucy, claimed the fact when he discovered the fossil all the bones had been lying scattered through a hillside. When he looked upwards the slope, he found that there were several other pieces of bones sticking around. Since the fossil was not discovered in situ, the bones could have been anywhere. Lucy had a small chimp-like head, both in size and shape. Several leading paleoanthropologists claim that the mode of locomotion of Lucy was significantly different from that of the recent human beings. The discovery of the fossils of Lucy has been a great achievement in the discovery of the theory about the origin of the human beings. In the recent years, several genetic arguments have been offered to the public as the definitive new proof that the human beings share a common ancestor with apes and other animals. As per the leading researchers, there is no longer any room for the disagreements. The extensive study of the genomes has led to the inexorable conclusion that the humans share a common ancestor with various other living beings. This idea of the human and ape common ancestry is of great dispute. In addition to this, the conclusion of the common ancestor for the mice and humans is virtually inescapable. At the best, the evidence that has been discussed have reaffirmed about something that all of us already knew. This was the fact that the humans and the chimps share similar functional genetic sequences. However, this can be explained by the common design just like the common descent. As it is already seen that the arguments of the leading scientists from the junk DNA have been eroded by the new studies that cover a myriad of the functions for non-coding DNA. In particular, the biologists are finding the extensive evidence of function for non-coding elements like the ancient repetitive DNA and even the pseudogenes. Nevertheless, unlike the proponents of the Darwinian evolution, intelligent design theorists are not obliged for accepting the ape and human common ancestry. They are free to follow the evidence wherever it would lead them. The genetic arguments about the human and ape common ancestry is greatly based on the assumptions made by Charles Darwin that tend to be outdated than the careful deductions from the available evidence.